Hey there, I'm Rachel Aaring, and you're listening to the Top Music Piano Podcast. Get inspired as we discuss creative resources, trends in piano pedagogy, ways to grow your income and streamline your studio, and new ways to engage your students each week. If you are a teacher who wants to go beyond the method books to create an innovative studio that fosters lifelong music makers, you've come to the right place. Hello, teacher friends. I hope that you're doing well today. Here in the States, it feels like summer is already winding down, even though it seems like just yesterday that I picked my son up from his last day of first grade. I'm going to be honest with you all. I am feeling some anxiety about the end of summer and starting the new school year. I had a long list of projects and things I wanted to do during the summer, and I really have not gotten very far down the list. If you are feeling any of these same feelings today, I hope that you will keep listening because I'm going to talk with you about some ideas to get you through the stressful times, as well as some habits you can set up to help with your day-to-day stress and anxiety. But first, let me give you a little bit of background about this episode. A few years ago, I was a new mom, I had recently lost my job, and there was a global pandemic happening. I was feeling pretty stressed out and overwhelmed at that moment in my life. During that time, someone came alongside of me and gave me permission to take care of myself. Up until that point, I really thought that I had to put everyone else's needs before my own. And then if there happened to be any time left over, which let's be honest, there usually wasn't, then it would be okay for me to do something for myself. But this woman explained to me that I needed to take care of myself. She told me it's okay to let your son watch a few minutes of TV or play by himself so that you can take a break or do a short meditation. Give him a picture to color while you journal or take a walk together outside because you want to. It honestly, friends, was life-changing for me. I always thought that taking care of myself was selfish but she taught me that it is actually necessary. So today I'm going to walk you through six different types of self-care and give you some practical ways that you can implement these into your life without upending the apple cart, as they say. So let's get started. The first type of self-care that I want to talk about is physical self-care. You can probably all think of many ways that you could physically take better care of yourself get more exercise, eat healthier. But I want you to think specifically about your teaching day and then think about some ways that you could schedule one of these things into your life that would actually work. Maybe you have a 30-minute break where you usually end up just scrolling on your phone. What if you took a quick walk around the block instead? I know that a lot of people struggle with drinking enough water. Thankfully, drinking water is my superpower. I love plain old water and I drink it all day, but I know that's not the case for many of you. Do you have water available to you all day? What if you made a big jug of fruit-infused water or whatever your favorite is each night to keep nearby the next day? Or just make sure that you have a big water bottle that's filled up before you start teaching. These are really simple things you can do that can make a difference. I know that another issue for teachers is food and how to feed yourself. Many of you are working until seven, eight, or nine in the evening, and feeding yourself and your family is a real problem. I actually did an episode about how to feed your family as a teacher on my other podcast, the Dynamic Piano Teaching Podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, we'll link it in the show notes. I actually interviewed my sister, who is a school teacher and a principal and mom of four, about how she feeds her family. I think the biggest takeaway from that episode, spoiler alert, was to make a plan that fits your lifestyle. Right now, personally, I'm loving Trader Joe's prepared meals. I'm sure they aren't as healthy as homemade meals, but they fit what I can do right now. So that's what we're going with for the busy nights where I just don't have it in me to cook a full meal from scratch. There are other things that fall into this category of physical self-care as well. Getting sleep is one that I know many of us struggle with. So rather than feel overwhelmed that I just gave you multiple things that you might feel like you aren't winning at, pick one small thing and see if you can implement it for one week. 
Maybe it's meal prepping for a week or turning your phone off an hour before bed or maybe doing a short walk between lessons. The physical self-care category is a big one, so don't let it overwhelm you. You don't have to do all the things right now perfectly. The great thing is that with this category, even one small change can make a noticeable difference. The second type of self-care is emotional self-care. This is also a big one, but in a different way than the physical self-care. I think that the biggest help for me in this area has been meditation. And I've talked about that before on the podcast. And meditation doesn't have to be some crazy woo-woo thing. I just go on YouTube and find someone with a nice soothing voice that I like. And it's a chance to breathe, relax, and let go of the anxiety that we often hold in our bodies. Sometimes I'll do an affirmation meditation, or if it's nighttime, I'll do a sleep meditation or yoga nidra. If you don't know about yoga nidra, I recently talked about it briefly in the episode with Tiffany Pinhorn Smith about piano and yoga. There are other forms of emotional self-care as well. Some of you love to journal, so setting aside some time for that would be great. Think about activities that will make you feel emotionally well and stable. Type three is social self-care, which I hadn't really thought about before, but it makes sense. We need to have our people around us. But when I was thinking about social self-care, the word that came to mind was boundaries. Knowing what feels good to you socially, who is going to be supportive of you rather than make you feel bad about yourself. Maybe it's knowing that you love meeting up with friends at the end of a busy week. Or maybe it's knowing that when Friday night rolls around, all you want to do is put on your pajamas and curl up on the couch. And then using your boundaries to plan accordingly. Personally, I am very much an introvert, although I love spending time with my friends. But I'll share a little story with you. When I went to the NCKP conference last summer, It was exhausting for me interacting with so many people every day and then going to all the sessions and concerts, even though I loved it. But there were at least two days when I went up to my room and took a nap in the middle of the day because I just could not make it for 15 hours straight of people time without a break. I knew that I had to have some time alone to recharge, even if it meant missing out on a few things. My roommate at the conference, on the other hand, would stay out socializing all day till all hours of the night, and that felt great to her, but I just couldn't do that, and that was okay too. Social self-care might also include having boundaries around this little thing that we call social media that can suck us in and then spit us out feeling bad about ourselves. Now, I love my social media, so I'm not against it, but I also know that it can be a time suck and it can make me feel bad about wasting time, but also feel bad because I see what everyone else is doing that I'm not doing. On the flip side, however, for me, it can actually be really motivating to see what other people are doing. And there are certainly inspiring things on social media that get me excited. So I'm not ready to throw the whole thing out right now. But I think being more thoughtful and intentional with our social media rather than letting it control us is what I know I need to do more of. So that's my take on social self-care, and you can let me know if you have a different take on it. Next on the list is personal self-care. Now, I'm not really sure how this differs from physical and emotional because I feel like those are all very personal. But I thought I would take this time to talk about something that I knew I wanted to include in this episode, and that is how music can be used as self-care. When was the last time that you sat down and played the piano purely for your own enjoyment? Maybe some of you do this regularly, which is fantastic, but I think a lot of us get so caught up in teaching or practicing for a specific performance or a gig that we forget that we are musicians and we can actually play music purely for enjoyment and relaxation. This is a whole other topic, but I think it's interesting and unfortunate that there is so much pressure put on musicians sometimes to the point that we completely lose the enjoyment of playing music. I want to encourage you to sit down at the piano and just play for fun. No judgment of yourself 
or a few wrong notes, but just let the music wash over you and fill you with joy. And then remember that feeling when you are teaching your students so that you can remind them why playing the piano is so special. I just a couple days ago saw a new book that was released recently called Music and Mind, edited by the great soprano Renee Fleming. I have not had a chance to read it yet, but it talks about the healing power of music. The description for the book says this, a compelling and growing body of research has shown music and arts therapies to be effective tools for addressing a widening array of conditions, from providing pain relief and alleviating anxiety and depression to regaining speech after stroke or traumatic brain injury, and improving mobility for people with disorders that include Parkinson's disease and MS. How incredible is it that we get to play music? We could potentially be part of someone's healing or perhaps lessening our own anxiety through music. This sounds like it could be a whole other episode as well. And I actually have a guest coming on in a few weeks who I'm pretty sure is going to be sharing about the healing power of music in her life. So be on the lookout for that. But for now, we're going to move on to the fifth type of self-care, and that is financial. Now, I know financial self-care might not sound very fun, but it is certainly essential. And I think it can feed into the other types that we've talked about. Think about if you take the time to get your finances in order, you will know when you have the freedom to indulge in a massage or a pedicure. For piano teachers, financial self-care is also about our mindset around money and pricing our lessons in a way that we feel valued and are able to create the life that we want to live. If you listen to the episode that I did recently with Andrea Miller, she talked about setting our rates based on our financial needs and goals rather than just Googling other music studios and in our area and setting rates accordingly. Maybe financial self-care means setting aside a couple of hours each month to go to your favorite coffee shop to track your expenses and revenue for that month. The last of the six types of self-care is work self-care, which kind of can tie into the financial self-care as well. What does that mean? It sounds like an oxymoron, work self-care. So let's unpack it a little bit. I think this one also goes back to boundaries. Are you working the hours that you want to work or are you resentful that you're working until 8 p.m. every night? Do you schedule six hours of back-to-back lessons because you don't think you deserve a break or you'll let someone down if you take a break? I am giving you permission right now to look at your schedule and your work life and see if it is the life that you dream of. If you are an independent teacher, you are in control of these things. And I know it can feel like you aren't because people are requesting certain lesson times and you're scared of losing students or losing money. But what if you set those fears aside? What if you took one small step to get closer to your dream schedule? What would that look like? You are the business owner and you can take control of these things. Now, I packed a ton of content into this short little episode, so I don't want to leave you feeling more overwhelmed than when we started. That is definitely not my goal here today. So here's what I want you to do. If you are able, if you're not driving in your car or running on the treadmill, I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. I'm going to go through the six types of self-care one more time. And I want you to see which one jumps out at you as the one that you want to focus on. Not the five, but just the one. So here we go. Number one was physical self-care, where we talked about moving your body, feeding your body, drinking enough water, and getting good sleep. Number two was emotional self-care, where we talked about meditation and journaling. Maybe you've been putting off finding a good therapist or joining a group of some kind that would help with your emotional well-being. Number three was social self-care, and we talked about having good boundaries. Maybe you need to say no to some things, or maybe you need to reach out to some friends that you've been meaning to connect with but haven't had time for or made time for. Number four was personal self-care. And we talked about how powerful music is and how playing the piano for our own enjoyment can be a form of self-care. Number five was financial self-care. And we talked about the freedom of having our finances in order. And number six was work self-care, where we again talked about boundaries and being in control of our own businesses. Which one did you choose? 
If you need some accountability, you can pop into the Top Music Pro membership site and look for the thread about this episode, and you can share with me which number you are going to focus on for the coming weeks. Just for fun before we end, I asked my Instagram followers, who are mostly piano teachers, about their favorite forms of self-care, and they did not disappoint me. Here were their answers. One lady said, sitting alone with coffee and my cats and no phone. That's a good one. Facials and hair appointments, a nap, reading with my cat, spending time with a friend and coffee, sleep. That's all she wrote. I love that. Reading fiction on my porch and Pilates, a cup of tea and a favorite TV show. One person wrote plain Bach. And this one is great. Painting while listening to music. I love all of those ideas, and I hope it sparks some inspiration in you to take care of yourself so that you can show up as your best self for your students and especially for your family. That's the end of the episode for today, but I do want to mention that if you are listening to this episode soon after it airs, there is still time to sign up for the Whole Body Teaching Course with Tim Topham and Paul Myatt. It starts on August 1st, and I know I am really looking forward to learning from these two incredible piano teachers. So if you haven't signed up yet, head over to topmusic.co forward slash whole body to get in before it's too late. All right, my teacher friends, I am Rachel Aaron, and you've been listening to the Top Music Piano Podcast. I will talk with you all very soon. How do you keep up to date with all the latest trends and research into music education? How do you connect with other teachers around the world and make sure your teaching stays fresh and relevant for students of all ages and stages both now and into the future? I created our Top Music Pro membership to be the one-stop shop for music teaching resources, training, support and community and I'd love for you to come and join us inside. With over 40 comprehensive training courses, hundreds of teaching demonstrations and lesson plans, free monthly sheet music, discounts, and all the business and pedagogy support you could ever need, Top Music Pro is the community you've been looking for. If you're ready to level up your learning from the podcast and join thousands of other teachers in our global network, head over to topmusicpro.com today.